talked to lots of people who come here looking for the Silicon Valley experience. They arrive with one suitcase in hand when they head south on the 101, hoping to see it, this place they've heard about. And it's freeways, and it's office parks, and it's strip malls, and it looks like every place they've ever been. They end up wondering, where have they come? Why did they come here? What was it that brought them? Code itself is the underlying thing that makes computers work. Why is it important to the world? It's because it's the blood of the organism that's our culture now. It's, it, it, it makes everything go. You know, technology has become the god of our society now. I mean, I think that people stand in awe of it and, the, and stand in awe of the people that make it. There's a sense that software is a kind of new frontier. You know, it's the old gold rush metaphor, the California gold rush all over again. It's the kind of Hollywood of the 20s. This very small set of people is really defining what our world's going to be like. I mean, it, you know, the computer becoming ubiquitous and the way we interact with the world more and more mediated through the computer is this very small group of people defining what that world's going to be like. Less than three years ago, a small team of engineers at Netscape Communications created software that made surfing the internet easy and in the process changed the face of computing. On this day, however, the company is in big trouble, driven to the ground by its rival and software colossus, Microsoft. Only a radical strategy will help save it. Let's hear a little Mozilla! Mozilla! Netscape is giving away its source code to programmers outside the company. The source code is the secret formula for browsing the web. The code is named Mozilla, and if widely adapted, it will make Netscape's code the internet standard, drawing users to its other products and restoring the company's sagging fortunes. Our story focuses on a team of engineers who will come together in this building. Over the course of the next year, they will turn their lives inside out to create Mozilla and battle a giant competitor to save their company and shape the future of computing. Right now we have a problem that the work looks like it can't possibly be done for the date we announced. So we're just trying to drill down on how doing we are. Sometimes the only way to do that is get everybody in a room and stare each other in the eyes. We said we're giving you Netscape Communicator on 331. So if we're not giving them Netscape Communicator on 331, we need a way we, to address that. We can't do anything that. about it right now, and we're working to rectify The goal that. is to get Mozilla to developers by March 31st, a few short weeks from now. It is one of the most ambitious schedules in the company's history. It's a joke. I think we've been very explicit about okay. it. Okay, when you make a mistake, correct it as soon as you can. That's all you can do. We've now, we've now timed out okay. on my imaginary a lot of time. <laughs> Michael Toy, one of Netscape's first employees, heads the team that will prepare Mozilla for public release. We're probably doomed. We're probably going to fail. Microsoft is probably going to squish us like a bug anyway, but just because we're doomed, it doesn't mean, you know, we can't get up in the morning and, and do work. All rise. I mean, I'm pretty flip with my kids about what I do. You know, what do you do at work? At? Oh, I don't know. I, I sit in meetings and I feel depressed and I read email. Oh, oh, you got me. Oh. Well, they think my office is the greatest place in the world, though. It's like, oh, we're going to your office? Oh, yay, yippee, I love going to your office. Because, you know, they play with the guns and there's free soda and there's the giant balls. Basically, I work at Disneyland as far as they're concerned. I talk about marathon versus sprint. The hard part is to run with significant intensity the whole way, knowing that if you ever start, wa start walking, you're not going to make it. And just keep the end in sight and know that there's this urgency. Jim Ruskind, an expert on software security, is brought in to enforce rigorous standards of engineering precision. Imagine if you had a project where you felt doom was imminent, all the different players wondering, 
Are they pushed beyond their level? Can they think of a way of running faster? Can anyone help them? So there's a lot of tension and anxiety over making the schedule. Jamie Zawinski, free source code evangelist, will enlist outside developers to Netscape's cause. The free source thing is, is trying to change the rules, right? There are people who have the free software religion. The one thing they have in common is they're all hackers. You know, they all you know, like writing code. So hoping to tap into all of those smart people and, and get something from it, you know, so that everyone benefits. Yeah, maybe. Um, I don't know. We're talking about two million, two and a half million lines of code, and every one of them has to be gone over carefully, you know, in some cases twice. Okay, I think we're ready. With hundreds of engineers converging on Mozilla, with new code to enable its release, Tara Hernandez makes sure that their changes do not crash Mozilla and bring everyone's work to a halt. This is how we keep track of all the changes that are going in. Uh, green is good. A lot of changes going in right here, and wham, the builds all died. Okay? All right. Bye. No, 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 no. Some of the worst crashes are reserved for Scott Collins, a veteran code writer who stands by for late night troubleshooting. Now the moment you've all been waiting for. When one of our lucky videos qualifies... I've been here for about, uh, I don't know, 60 hours or so. Writing software is different from um, selling real estate. Selling real estate, you sell to people, the people who are asleep at night. When they go to sleep, you have to stop selling real estate. Computers never sleep. <laughs> You can see my cube is decked out a little bit better than other people's. I have a nice couch, little mattress on under there I can sleep in. Artwork from my children. I have control of the light switches. This is what I'd like to get if my wife truly loved me. She'd let me have one. Life is good.